Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise God, we come before you, Lord, just saying thank you for this beautiful day. It's a little cold, it's a little blustery, but uh, we know that you are warm and alive in our hearts. And for that, Lord, we're just thankful. Lord, I thank you for each person that's on the call. I thank you for each person that is present. I thank you for what has brought them to this point of wanting to learn more about you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to study your word without uh, any hindrances. Uh, we're not having to hide from anyone. We're not having to uh, do it in shelter. Uh, we, we can do it out in the open where we can also just give you praise at any moment. Lord, uh, for this class today, Lord, I ask that you open up our minds that we may be receptive to what you would have us to learn. Uh, open up our hearts that we may internalize this lesson and that ultimately we can share this lesson with others uh, so that we know, um, since we know the reason why Christ came, uh, that uh, we will graciously uh, spread the news to others so that they too may be beneficial in receiving this good word. These things you ask in your mighty and majestic son's name, amen. All righty. Uh, amen. Okay, we are concluding our lesson on Jesus is the reason for the season and the concluding lesson today is entitled Born to Die. Uh, prayerfully, after taking a look at this lesson, we'll realize specifically that while we get a little off guard by the presence and all of that, that it was his birth um, it, from the moment he was born, what was at the shadow of the cross, as we saw with the Christmas play and some other things, he was born to die. Now, the world doesn't think about why Christ was born. All they're usually thinking about is, oh, this is such a wonderful time of year, time of sharing, the time of... But the real reason that Christ came was to die for us. Uh, we get all warm and fuzzy when we hear songs like Away in the Manger and Silent Night and Oh, oh Holy Night. Uh, but the world doesn't have a full grasp of why this baby was born. Uh, and his birth was no accident. It had been planned from the very foundation of the world, and it had been planned with a purpose. Uh, for from Bethlehem was Calvary. The cross of Calvary cast its shadow upon the infant and so that he could fulfill his purpose. And the purpose of his birth was his death. Uh, God didn't need to call an emergency meeting with the angels and all the others uh, to let them know what happened because it was already in the works. Jesus knew he was going to have to take one for the team, for lack of better wording. And we see evidence of this in John chapter 12, verse 27 and 28. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. 
Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven uh, came a voice from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. So, the fact that Christ was to die was decreed, which means it was what? It was, it, was already, it was destined, it was mandated, or it was planned. And it was planned before the creation of the world by God. Nothing comes in front of it. It is also inescapable. Thirteen eight says, and all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. We are to be in the world, but not what? Of the world. We are ambassadors of our home. And we are representatives of our leader. Because this is not our home, that means that as ambassadors, we could be recalled at any moment uh, at the pleasure of our king. Because we are here representing where? We are here representing heaven. So, what casts the light on our king? We do, as ambassadors. So it continues, they are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belongs to the Lamb who were slaughtered before the world was made. So before the foundation of the world, there was no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. Acts 2 and 23 says, but God knew what would happen and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But it was, that was the mechanism by which he was to go. Uh, it it was yes, ma'am. So the Jews are the ones who had to declare it so that he could be healed, but it was actually the Roman government that invented it. So that's why Gentiles were killed, even though they only did what was right. Right. The the other part to that is. The Romans were trying out this new technology that they had, which was the crucifixion, uh, because no good Jew, the Jews would stone you to death. But here the Roman government was trying out their new technology because of what the Jews had proclaimed. Okay? So... 1 Peter 1, 18-20 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Jesus, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. We see it again. Not in these last days he has been revealed for your sake. So, Christ was to die. It was decreed. It was also declared. Where was it declared? In the Garden of Eden. And where was it declared by? It was declared by the Lord. 
Genesis 3.15 says, and I will put enmity. What is enmity? It is. I will put hatred between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So, who is God talking to there? He's talking to the the family and the serpent. So, we have the first promise and the beginning of the gospel. The gospel is what? It is good news. So, this beginning pronouncement delivered to Satan, his fate, and... It said within the hearing of fallen man that a scarlet thread begins to weave its way through the pages of Scripture that lead to the cross. So this is an announcement heard on all the fallen man. It was also prophesied by the prophets and the writings of old. Psalm 22:16 says, For the dogs have compassed the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I, uh, I tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. Uh, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. The first time that we saw this was in Psalm, but it was fulfilled in Matthew 27:35, when they crucified him, they divided his clothes by casting what? So, how low can you get? <laughs> uh, you don't want him. They're right. <laughs> you don't want him, but they don't want you. But you want his robe. That that makes no sense. Uh, we also see this in Isaiah 53, uh, verses 55 through 56, that he was wounded or pierced because of our transgressions. And what are our transgressions? Sins. What kind of sins? There are specific kind of sins. Mm -mm. It's a sin, but it is more like a crime. Okay? Uh, like you driving and you run a, a red light. We don't think of it as a sin, but we've actually committed a crime. We have transgressed. Okay? So, he was bruised or crushed because of our iniquities. What are our iniquities? It is more like an injustice. Like us driving down Broadway and we get to the Vidoc right there at fourteenth and blow and wave and at those that are houseless uh without bothering to first off be thankful that it's not you and then turn around and not provide any sustenance to them even when we have the means. So, we got transgressions, we got iniquities. The chastisement or punishment for our peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. This is not talking about a physical healing. We love to quote this uh, when somebody's going through some type of physical pain, but it is not a physical healing that they're talking about. It is a spiritual healing. 
So it continues, we all went astray like sheep. We've all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid upon him all the evil of us all. So it was declared in the garden. It was prophesied by the prophets and writings of old. It was proclaimed at his birth by the angels. <laughs> Joseph was secretly plotting to do away with his wife when he received this word uh, from Gabriel that says in Matthew twenty one twenty one, she will bear a son and you will call his name what? And what is his purpose? He will save his people from their sins. In fact, we note that salvation comes by no other name. We see that, see that in Acts. And it was also declared to the shepherds. And the shepherds are not these great, wonderful creatures that we normally see in the Christmas plays. Oh, look, the shepherds have come. They were considered the lowest of the low. So in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, we see, And the angel said to them, Fear not, because <laughs> you had to bear in mind, it was dark as all get out, and then all of a sudden this bright light appears. Many of us, uh, we, we talked about this last week, many of us, would have had a little different reaction. Uh, I would have probably been one of those trying to see what it is, but you best believe I would have ducked behind something to, just in case. But uh, and the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So this is one of those times when just in this one verse, all three descriptions of Jesus are there. Savior, Christ, Lord. Verse 12, and this should be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. We have romanticized this to the point that everybody thinks, oh, this is just cute. But think about it. He wasn't laying on a feather bed. In a manger, there's a bunch of stinky things and a bunch of sticky things. Because, hey, uh, sticky. it's sticky. sticky. That's right. So, uh, all of you that got children and grandchildren, wouldn't you want to put your child in this scenario? Mm -mm, no. Right. No. Now, some of your adult children you might want to do, but <laughs> not the baby. The baby. All right. So, uh, it was also declared that Christ was to die, uh, was pictured by the gifts of the wise men. We talked about them last week. Uh, where they had come to see Trump, I mean, uh, Herod the king. And the wise men came from the east, saying, Where is he who is born the king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. And when they had come to the what? To the manger? Manger? Yeah. Nope. Came to the house. They saw the young child. He was no longer a little baby. He's now guesstimated to be about two to three years old. He's a toddler, terrible too. With Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they'd opened up their treasures, they presented gifts to him. They didn't come empty-handed. They presented him with gold, frankincense, and mirth. So, uh -oh. 
They mm-hmm. had traveled several hundred miles to work. They were guided to Bethlehem by a supernatural celestial phenomenon. Usually a star does not last that long. The star is burning out. The star declared does not last that long. So for it to not only bring draw them there, but then to guide them after they left <laughs> uh, Herod, uh, that, that was just remarkable. Here's the whole thing. Daniel was the one that prophesied this uh, back in Daniel chapter 12 about the coming Messiah. So what does that say for us? If we would just tell the story, <laughs> we don't know who all would be affected. Right? So when they saw the child, they fell down and worshipped him. This was God in the flesh, God in a body. They could do nothing else. Bowing before him, they gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and mare. Uh Frankincense is a spice that relieves pain. It was one of these gifts that uh, was the most unusual. Frankincense uh, is kind of perfumey, uh, but unlike frankincense, myrrh smelled of death because it was usually what would be used to help in the embalming of a corpse. Uh, we see in John chapter 19, verse 39, that uh and there also came and there also came uh, Nicodemus uh which is the first uh came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes in about a hundred pound weight. So that was to aid in the embalming. And we see this mayor pointed to Jesus' death in Daniel chapter 9. Uh, once again, where it talks about our disobedience. <laughs> so then we see that it was also announced by John the Baptist. In John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold, which means look the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Uh, Jesus was the true Lamb. He was the appointed by God who would be offered as a sacrifice for us, for our sins. The world could care less that Jesus is the one that can save them. So we need to constantly be the one that points that out. It was even acknowledged by Christ himself. In John chapter 12, verse 27, where he says, My soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. And then in Luke chapter 9, verse 22, he says, The Son of Man must suffer many great things, many things, be rejected by the elders, chief priests, the teachers of the law, and must, not may, but must, be killed, and on the Thursday be raised to life. And this is basically the importance of Christ being born to die. So, from the time he was born, always in the shadow, if you look at my shadow, you'll see the same disfigured person, but in the shadow of Christ, as an infant, was the shadow of the cross. Every morning when he woke up, it was the shadow of the cross. Every night when he went to lay down, it was the shadow. Do you see shadows at night? No. <laughs> you don't see them. But for Jesus, the shadow of the cross was there. 
He came to be the author and finisher of our faith, our salvation. He was born to die. There was no salvation in his birth. A lamb of God would have to be slain, and the price for our sins had to be paid. Because we see in in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is what? So, we sin. All we're doing is trying to kill Christ all over again. Hebrews 9 and 22. Indeed, according to the law, almost everything was purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no what? None. God said the son uh, had uh, to become a man in order to pay the price for our sins. Only Jesus could pay that price because he was all God and all man. We see in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become righteous of God in him. And we see Paul writes and tells the church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 2, uh, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider itself robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even the death on the what? Which, like I said, was new technology. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow, and in those in heaven and all, those on the earth and those under the earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So, what all did Jesus come to earth to do? He came to reveal God to mankind. He came to teach the truth. He came to fulfill the law. He came to offer his kingdom, not our kingdom. It doesn't say our kingdom come. It says thy kingdom, which is his. He came to show us how to live. He came to bring us peace and to reveal God's love to us. But his ultimate purpose was that he might die. Uh, there is a side to the Christmas story that we usually don't tell. We usually just stick with the birth. We stick with the manger. We stick with that. And, oh, look at the little baby. Look, Not realizing what that baby's going to become. Uh, so he was born to die. Uh, and he was born to die that we might live. He was born to die in our place. Why did he need to be? What place sir, was he dying in? Because of our sins. It's funny how we can sin and not think anything of it. Like I was telling you a few minutes ago, running the traffic light. We we don't give it a second thought. But it is the equivalent of you shooting someone. Sin is a sin. We just don't give it that same weight. We try to do the misdemeanor sins and the felonious sins, uh, not realizing that we're all messed up. Oh, yeah. 
I had not thought about that. Miscellaneous sins. We we got some of them. Oh, I just told a little white lie. <laughs> okay. So, Christ should be central in all we do. Out of necessity, we should run to him. And out of gratefulness, what should we do? We should live for him. So, he was born to die that a whole lot of us would be able to do some things. He was born to die that I might teach. Was I always uh, in the teaching profession? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, so there are a whole lot of things that we need to be thankful that he was born for. So we need to thank him for his willingness to lay aside the splendor of glory we just read in Philippians to become one of us. We need to let others know how we should emulate the example we have in Christ. Use words when necessary. We need to share with others the many things that Christ came to do when he came to earth. And we need to give out our gratefulness for all Christ has done. Now, we're going to mess up in every walk but we don't have to stay in that fallen state. We can rise up and walk in the way that God has purposed for us to live. We're starting a new series next week uh, entitled Living the Courageous Life. And that first lesson that we see is primarily going to be built upon Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Uh, the series... Uh, is living the courageous life, and the lesson title is the anatomy of courage. So we're going to be talking about courage for the next four weeks. Uh, so we're going to pray that uh, we get a good start on the year uh, because there are a whole lot of things that Don't put that courageous spirit about us. Uh, my neighbor often laughs at me because she said, everybody else on the block, when they hear gunfire, they run in. She said, I've seen the first thing you do is open up your door to see where, <laughs> where it came from. And the whole thing is, if something was to go down, I, I just need to know. When my neighbor's house got shot up, uh, it was annoying to know that the person that did it was a friend of their family. And the reason that he was doing the shooting at night was just in case he, he said he was giving them a warning. A warning for what? That you're going to die? Because this is a big family. And, but they don't give that a thought. Uh, so I'm thankful that you've joined us this year. I'm thankful that we have been able to come back and gather together in the building. Uh, so for those of you that are listening, uh, with some of you I understand why you can't make it. Uh, but for those who can and will, uh, you need to come out and share in this fellowship here. Uh, because we we are a great family here. So, 
once again, I thank you for joining me, joining us. Uh, I pray something has been said that put a little thinking in your mind as to why we are here and why Christ came. And with that in mind, I love each and every one of you and want you to know uh, I, I have been praying and are praying for you. Uh, um, let's pray. Most gracious and all wise God, we thank you for all the multitude, all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon each and every one of us. Lord, uh, there are so many gifts that you've given to us um, that we need to be thankful of, we need to be thoughtful of, and we need to be reminding others of all the great gifts that God has provided to each and every Lord, you are such an awesome God. You are such a merciful God. You're such a loving God. And we can't make it without you, Lord. Lord, uh, there are many that started off the year with us that uh, you have taken home, and uh, we celebrate their home going and look forward to our reunion with them. Lord, uh, I thank you once again for each person that's on this call. I ask you continually be with them, continue to embolden their life, so that others may be drawn to you through them. Lord, you heard the petitions of your people, request for healing from hurting, request for healing from uh, disease and pain, uh, request for healing for uh, bereavement, uh, comfort, and peace all mixed in and intermingled in there. Lord, uh, there are many that need your guidance, and we are the only light that they're going to see. So once again, Lord, uh, just, just let us shine so that you can get the glory that you are due, uh, so that through our actions you, Lord, become glorified. Lord, I thank you for guiding us through this year and um, if it be your will that uh, we return, uh, we, we just say once again, just thanking you. I'm thanking you in advance for what you're about to do. Lord, we bless you, praise you, and magnify you. These things we ask in your mighty and majestic son's name, amen.